All right. Well, so it's we have to ascent. We'll go ahead and start. Uh, we only have a few people in here that are from advisory board proper. Um, so do we call the order? Uh, and I don't know. If, I think you probably have met each other in previous meetings, but uh, and in the rest of us are you know folks that work in the program, and you probably heard from us multiple times. Um, but uh, Bob, if you just want to introduce yourself to uh, to James and Heather, and just to make sure uh, people know who each each other is, is on the, the advisory board, and then we'll kind of blow through a lot of the news, and we're going to record it for people who aren't here as well. Uh, but there's really kind of more of an open discussion area that I, I want to talk to people about and get some thoughts on and see if we have any things there. And maybe we'll even give you some time back at the end of this. So, uh, Bob, you want to introduce yourself real quick to the other folks just to make sure everybody here remembers who you are? Um, sure. I'm a working game designer and have been for th uh, 35 years now. Uh, wow. Written a, yeah, written uh, a book about game design that's used by different universities, um, spoken at GDC innumerable times, was past chairman of the IGDA, the International Game Developer Association, but mostly I'm the game designer and that's what I do. That's awesome. Still going at it strong, which is great. Uh, yeah. Mr. Gatto, do you want to introduce yourself to everybody, remind them uh, who you are, and what you do? Sure. Hi, everybody. Um, I'm Jim Gatto. I'm a partner at the law firm of Shepard Mullen. Um, I kind of wear a couple hats here. I'm in the IP group, but I head up our games practice, uh, probably the most relevant uh, to this group. I've been doing work <laughs> with game companies for a quite a long time. Um, also do a lot of work in the um, blockchain and other aspects of inter interactive entertainment. Yeah, wonderful. That's a growing area, as you know, and I'm sure other people are aware, right? So. Although NFTs have kind of died down, thankfully. Uh, <laughs> they're, not, they're not going away. They're not going I know away. they're not going away, but at least they've died down off the hype. Yeah. Um, and then uh, Heather, do you want to introduce yourself to everybody? Yes, uh, I'm the principal enterprise architect at the International Monetary Fund. Uh, prior to joining them, I've spent a lot of time in the U.S. federal go government contracting side of IT all the way from strategy and architecture into delivery and operation. Awesome. Well, thank you. Well, I thank all of you guys for uh, showing up and uh, joining us. And hopefully we'll have a quick discussion on a few things after we kind of go some, through some news just to keep you guys aware of where we are and what's going on. Like I said, we'll kind of cruise through it so we don't uh, you know, take up too much of your time. But first up, we have uh, Sang Nam, who's going to talk to you briefly about where our uh, game design program is, because that's the starting, the founding of all this. You know, that's where the BSGI kind of sprang out of, and there are our talent pipeline uh, of folks, and we teach, and, uh, and everything kind of comes back to that in, in some way or form. So I'm going to go through this, and, and saying if you just want to hit on the main points on each slide real quick, and then tell me when you're ready to go to the next one. All right. Uh, hi, everybody. Uh, this is Sang Nam, Director of Computer Game Design Program. And the first update, uh, graduation. Uh, last May, we actually had this mini ceremony. So as you can see in the picture, uh, we actually created pretty nice uh, the stage for our uh, graduates. So uh, we had 51 students who walked on the, I mean, uh, who graduated. And we actually had 12, 12 students who walked on the stage. Uh, and we are expecting to have 15 students to graduate at the end of this summer. And as you can see, uh, CBPA, we had a pretty nice ceremony and uh, everybody attended, uh, really appreciate that university uh, had this in-person uh, mini ceremony. Next slide, please. And <clears throat> as you can see, uh, I mean, if you remember, we have this, uh, a game senior game expo every year. And because of pandemic, we had online uh, senior expo again. And you're looking at this, uh, the video trailer, and I'm going to put the link uh, on the chat. So you can actually visit the site and you can download and play our game, games from our senior capstone project. And, uh, the Professor James Casey and <laughs> Professor Eric Cristiani, uh, those uh, are uh, professors for 
senior capstone courses. And obviously you see great games, great games from our senior capstone classes. And yep. this is a minute long, so we can kind of finish the uh, uh, video trailer and we can move on. Yeah, there were 16 great games. They ran the gambit. We had uh, folks that worked uh, as a solo game, one person like that. We had most of them in groups. And a few of the projects are in here from our uh, senior kind of studio class as well. So a lot of great stuff. And you can play them and, and see the videos right on the website, as Sang said. And in terms of enrollment, uh, for the fall 2021, uh, we have IE 71. Uh, IE means uh, intention to enroll. So we have 54 freshmen and 17 transfer students uh, submitted intention of uh, enrollment. So that's a total of 71 incoming students. And this number usually goes up a little bit and when we get uh, some from undecided. And as of spring 2021, we had 352 students, major students in the BFA program, and we had 24 minor students. And again, this number fluctuate a little bit, and we just found out that uh, some students uh, decided to uh, take a semester off for the pandemic. Uh, so uh, probably I will be able to give you more accurate number in terms of enrollment uh, at the next uh, board meeting. Next slide, please. And this is a kind of snapshot of enrollment in CBPA, College of Visual and Performing Arts. And uh, basically, uh, I basically try to bring that up, a game design, uh, like we have, this is uh, as of uh, May 4th. So uh, number is slightly lower than what I just reported, but uh, we, we are seeing many undecided. And then typically uh, many of undecided majors actually are uh, computer game design major who didn't submit their portfolio. So uh, we are expecting a little more students and 71 total incoming students. Uh, it's kind of like a normal, uh, but we're expecting maybe 75 or a little closer to uh, 80 for fall 2021. Next slides. And <clears throat> if you remember uh, at the last board meeting, uh, <clears throat> we were part of organization, uh, organ organizing uh, committee universities for GI Con 2021, like game immersion conference and game jam. And this link will give you uh, the games from the game jam. And uh, our students participated and led game jam teams to complete interesting games to promote the UN sustainable development goals. So uh, Ocean Heroes, a walk to bus, uh, locust defense, and urchin chasers. Basically, all these four teams consist of university students from uh, like words, basically, uh, like GMU, University of San Diego, and uh, Westminster University in England, uh, and, and schools in China. And all these students formed teams and then uh, they participate in this game jam. And at your leisure, you can go to this link. I just uh, posted on chat just to, to get to know more about the games. And then uh, you will find uh, like student developers from Georgia Mason University in uh, all of these teams. And next slide, please. <clears throat> and indicate horizons. We will be featured at Indicate Horizon event along with the renowned game programs in US. And you can uh, go to this link to get to know more about this event. Basically, this is an uh, event to uh, introduce more computer game design or video game uh, programs in US. And actually, uh, there are schools from Europe as well. And, uh, Indicate created this event with HEVGA, Higher Education Video Game Alliance. And we basically introduce 
uh, some uh, renowned game program in the US. Uh, it's going to be on June 12th and June 13th. And if you know anybody uh, who are interested in like, studying computer game design in college level, you definitely, I definitely want you to share this link so that they can learn more about us along with other universities who teaches uh, computer game design and development. And next slide, please. Okay, faculty highlight. Uh, I mean, we have so many faculties uh, who are doing great things. And then uh, this time uh, I decided to put myself and <clears throat> Uh, I'm going to speak at 2021 Gwangju International ACE Fair. ACE stands for Asia Contents and Entertainment on September 9th, 2021. And yes, I got vaccinated. And I'm, I think, I think there, uh, Korea is planning to lift that self-quarantine for vaccinated. So uh, hopefully I'll be able to just go there and speak. But uh, that's on my calendar. And I also have been invited to speak at the fifth international conference on learning cities hosted by UNESCO Global Network of Learning Cities. And this will be on October 29th and 2021. Uh, and uh, this one actually was requested by Incheon, city of Incheon in Korea where our like George Mason Korea, George Mason University Korean campus is located. So uh, I work with uh, Mason Korea and submitted a couple of proposals and uh, they pick uh, one of the uh, talk about a uh, serious game and games for uh, healthcare and how it can help uh, the, uh, the, the city urbanization plan. So I'm going to speak about serious game and how game can make an impact to uh, rejuvenate uh, cities and city planning. And next slide, please. An update for Mason Korea. We just hired a uh, computer game programming faculty, uh, John P. Doran. <clears throat> so John will teach game programming and production courses at Mason Korea starting this fall. And we do have study at MK program. Basically, this is a semester long study abroad program. Uh, <clears throat> students from Fairfax can uh, fly to Korea and spend a semester uh, at Mason Korea. And this coming fall, we have two students uh, who will fly to Korea and study. And we actually had uh, more interest from our students, yet because of pandemic, only two students uh, decided to uh, take this challenge and go. Uh, but uh, we are planning to send more students. And uh, for your information, we do have uh, this degree program at Mason Korea. At Mason Korea, we offer uh, BFA degree program uh, in computer game design. And how it works is uh, they spent three years at Mason Korea. And on the fourth year, they come here at Fairfax and spend one year and graduate. And first cohort of uh, uh, Mason Korea computer game design students will fly to Fairfax next fall, not this coming fall, fall 2022. So uh, in near future, you will see how we uh, collaborate with uh, Mason Korea to uh, nurture this next generation game designer and developer in uh, USA and Korea. I think that's pretty much it from uh, computer game design academic program. Thank you. Excellent. Very cool. Um, Thank you, Sang. Any questions? Yes. Uh, I'm wondering what the uh, male-female breakdown of the students is, um, how we're doing uh, in that department and how we're doing also in uh, minority, uh, specifically uh, African-American students. Okay, so uh, for the, uh, the ethnic diversity, I do not have the data right now, uh, but uh, 
I can report that uh, to the next board meeting. But uh, for the female students, we have about 35, 40% female student population, uh, which has been dramatically developed from a few years ago. So in terms of female in tech, we support, we support uh, female in tech, especially computer game design. And then uh, we, we actively rec recruit uh, female students. And in terms of ethnic diversity, I do not have any data, but I'm going to report. I'm, I'll, I'll include that data for the next board meeting. Great. And, and are, are there, um, so it's great that you've aggressively gone after uh, women because we need a lot more women in the game industry. Um, are you uh, similarly aggressively pursuing uh, minority uh, and specifically African American uh, applicants or students? For, for now, no, because uh, we, we haven't advertised it that way. We didn't mm -hmm. uh, frame it that way yet. Uh, unofficially, uh, we, we have, uh, I mean, Georgia Mason University itself is one of the most diverse uh, the student population in U.S. And then our uh, student uh, body diversity kind of reflect that. Again, uh, we haven't aggressively recruit uh, person of color or African-American uh, students, yet uh, we try to be, try to stay active uh, visiting or in, uh, interacting with uh, local high schools. And then we uh, say we we say that we uh, we we try to champion diversity to in, uh, welcome more person of color. Yep. And MGTA, uh, the Mason Game and Technology Academy, has has done that through programs both uh, for women and underserved uh, populations as well um, from different areas from different school districts, and continues to do that. Uh, and they end up being a very good uh, pool of recruits to our program, as well as in gaming in general. So that that does help, and I'm continuing to work on that. But that's a good question. Um, have Have you uh, talked to the School of the Arts in DC? Uh, and would you like? So I, I have I know somebody who has a student there, not at all interested in, in game design or anything, but. Mm -hmm. But you know the person is a, is a parent uh, at that school, and the you know that school for the arts seems like it might be uh, an interesting sure. uh, group for for uh, Mason to talk to. Right. Yeah. No. Absolutely. Pass along the information, and we'll figure out wh what makes the most sense. You know, which program, which people would make the most sense to reach out. And I know we've done some stuff. I don't remember which one we went to in DC before, but uh, we're always looking out to do kind of those outreach type programs. So absolutely pass along. Okay, I will do that. Excellent, appreciate it. Anybody else, any other quick questions before we hit some of the VSGI uh, proper? Well, we always have time for questions at the end too, so. All right, we're gonna go through Sayers Games Institute. So we finished up the, the uh, speaker series since the last board meeting. Uh, we had the building your own board game, uh, which was great, really well received. Um, the gentleman that was doing that was uh, about to do the Kickstarter for his uh, most recent game, the one that he's really trying to push out there, Alien Pet Shop, which you may remember being kind of uh, done at the last meeting. And uh, then Stephanie, who's also on here, uh, did her talk on body ownership and virtual reality, and that went over very well. And in fact, uh, you, you've graduated based on that, right? So congratulations, <laughs> you can get your master's in game design. That's awesome. Uh, and of course we have all these recordings at our website. You can go in there and uh, check them out at your leisure, pass them along to other people. And the, really the key thing is if there are people that you know uh, or you uh, think that might be of interest to not only game design, but just students in general or the, the community in general, we're always looking for additional topics for speakers um, people that you may know. So feel free to uh, pass those along as well. We're always looking for folks, you know, that, that have that historic history, that background. I mean, I mean, I know you're always busy, Bob, but I'll, your kind of history would be great for these kids to, you know, just 
the types of things you've done. So always looking for, you know, interesting folks to, to just talk. And we're probably going to keep them virtual uh, just to make it easier on everybody. But that's just where we are at with the speaker series. So we'll start that up again in the fall. A uh, quick update on most of the companies that we have in here, just so everybody's aware of where we are and what's going on. The historical Move and Archive and Studio, Brad is the associate fa faculty, I believe that's the right title. Uh, and he's been working with our folks here, Stephanie and some folks in CVPA to develop uh, funding opportunities for the historical movement archive and really trying to make it more of an interdisciplinary collaboration across the university. So they're not technically a resident company as far as being in here anymore, but we still have a virtual relationship with them and we still continue to assist them like we do with a lot of our alumni and other uh, affiliated companies. So. Citadel Studios is now officially an alumni uh, studio. They did move out due to various reasons they had to move, um, but they are continuing to work on both their flagship product, uh, Legends of Aria, and actually two new projects, which they're shopping around to publishers soon. Uh, and as soon as we have more information, we'll pass it along and, and let you guys know about that. Fly Guy Interactive uh, is one of the few companies now still using the office uh, as opposed to being virtual, which you know that seems to be the thing with the pandemic these days, right? Uh, but uh, they were okayed for a phase three in their uh, communities and schools game, the social emotional uh, the, uh, assessment uh, game that they were doing. And so they're uh, finishing that up over the summer uh, and then looking for additional contracts and work. So if we find opportunities or there's things that people want to have a game made, they are open to it. Uh, Nami R, uh, you finished up Biggie Bill's saying, uh, and I, I believe, right? I hope you're done with it. Yes, <laughs> uh, which is all about teaching entrepreneurship through a digital board game. Uh, they're still working on USAID and doing uh, new projects throughout the year. Uh, the most recent one, which we talked about at the last board meeting, is a virtual residence, residency, which is one of the things we want to talk about in our open discussion later. Uh, it's a company that we have that is local but doesn't need our office space, but we've been working with them to get interns to help them with development. So they have people working on unity development from our program. Uh, they've also been working with students in our entrepreneurship class to uh, help with their business plans, market research, that type of stuff. So we've been helping them out in different ways, uh, aside from just having office space. So that's really cool. And finally, Empower Our Youth is still kind of on hold. We talked to them recently and they still have plans to do it, but nothing is concrete and we haven't put together a team for them yet because their, their plans have been kind of on hold and they've just been doing stuff from home as the CEO. So we're reevaluating that one and what that means within the residency virtual kind of mentorship that we've been uh, starting to, to do over this last year, and what that means going forward. So Stephanie, uh, you wanna give us a quick rundown, like what's new, uh, did we get anything? I know we I know we missed out on one, the first one was Vanzer's, um, was not awarded, but uh, what else do we have on there? Um, so we haven't heard anything back about the various grants that have been submitted except for Zanzers. Um, recently just finished up working with HMA to get them a grant to kind of get them off the ground to become more of a research center rather than just a small business within the VSGI. Um, and, you know, I keep, uh, I'm continuing to look for various uh, different projects and various different um proposal, request for proposals and things like that, that maybe uh, might interest some of our uh, faculty, some of our um, companies, things like that. If anybody here has any ideas or any projects that they would like to kind of maybe team up with us, um, you can always contact me. I'm always interested in looking for other things that we could focus on and other things that we could work on. Um, to kind of expand our research or, and our applied research program here at the VSGI. So. And we're always welcome to talk to folks. So if you know people that are interested in doing something and uh, working together, I, I feel uh, calls like every week just, the, the, just to fill out people and say, hey, you know, does this make sense? Where do we go? Uh, and they may end up being, you know, companies that are affiliated or maybe a team that works together. So always mm -hmm. looking for good networking opportunities. Yep. Our, and, our uh, PH I'm, oh, sorry, go ahead. I was going to say, I'm also looking for, um, you know, grants for uh, the, to build the virtual reality game that I designed for my 
for my thesis. Oh, that's and right. <laughs> just various other things. So if anybody is, like I said, interested in a project or something like that, and you're looking for funding, contact me and we can probably work something out. Uh, the PhD program that uh, Scott uh, Martin is working on with Sang and folks, as well as um, other colleges is still uh, plowing ahead. Right now it's uh, mostly done. The first draft is being shopped around to see where we need to uh, shore it up. They're getting on letters to support additional ones from uh, both inside programs as well as external partners. Uh, and we'll hope to, hope to have that submitted and then get it into the program. And then what we'll do is we'll ensure that we have the funding and, and get it through SHEV and, and the various different processes. And hopefully get a PhD in serious games here within the next year or two is really the, the goal. Um, speaking of uh, things that are coming out soon, we're gonna have a launch party. We don't have a date yet. We will send something out once we've uh, determined a date. But you know, obviously we've done uh, some book signing parties, launch parties in the past for Dr. Scott Martin. He's been prolific uh, as, a, as an instructor here uh, doing books on various topics, uh, mostly artificial intelligence. Uh, and this one is kind of a combination. It's uh, serious games as well as AI and uh, new technologies. And what's interesting is he asked uh, both myself and Stephanie to provide uh, writing in it. So we each did our own chapter. Uh, on various different things. Uh, so it's, it's a nice uh, collaboration between a lot of folks here at the VSGI. It's supposedly releasing on July 13th um, from Rutledge. Uh, as soon as we know and it's out and there's links and if people are interested, we can always uh, show you what it looks like. Um, and if we can get copies and do a signing, we'll do that too. And then and we'll, we'll, we'll do a little party like we did in the past. So be on the lookout for that. It's really good. I like I liked all the chapters. You know, especially mine i mean and stephanie's <laughs> scott's you know he writes a lot he's he's used to it but you know being collaborators in a book like this is, is kind of new and, and cool for us uh and i know uh, some of you like bob you've written books you know what it takes <laughs> and and what goes into that um so we learned some of that wonderful stuff uh some really quick updates that really didn't deserve their own slides but just to let people know uh, as part of uh, you know getting the SGI up to speed on things, I know the HoloLens has made a big push in the DOD and military markets, uh, government, uh, and big orders being put in. So we actually now have two of those devices here so that we can work with development, uh, work on additional use cases uh, with partners as needed. Uh, so we have those here. If people are interested in playing with them or learning how to use them, we do have them. Uh, we're also participating a lot in the future of the campus. I know myself and others have been in a lot of master planning uh, committees. So just to give you an idea of what that means, and the, uh, it's it's just more long-term plans for what three different campuses of Mason are gonna end up being. And obviously the VSGI is out here at SciTech and that one's really kind of focused on medical and graduate studies and you know kind of this innovative technologies and things like that, which is kind of where we, we came in. Uh, and we're still planning the, to get some additional space out here for the PhD program, et cetera. Um, and Fairfax is looking at how does it expand and how does it take you know, older properties and redo them like they just did Robinson Hall out on the, the main campus. Uh, and then Arlington's got a, a major expansion going on soon, uh, which is a lot of new space and a lot of new programs, engineering and and uh, computer science and, and, and a lot of things are going on out there. So it's really, how do we make each of these campuses unique and, 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 and not repetitive, but you know, stand on their own and allow everybody to have the right resources. One of the big things at SciTech is how do we get more people out here and how do we have the right resources for them? And luckily there's going to be residential and commercial and food coming in within the next year or two. So that's going to tie into how do we make this a community school versus just you know a few buildings and, and programs. So as we get more information or we find ways that it's going to impact us or our programs, we'll let you guys know as well. And may, there may be opportunities. In fact, one of the things we're doing with CVPA and some developers is looking at how do we expand our presence even in Fairfax City. Uh, and I know they wanna do a lot with esports and gaming and, and how did we put that into you know, these, these uh, not only residential, but commercial and retail uh, spots. And so I actually hooked them up with one of our board members who does that, uh, Drew Crowder, 
Uh, and they're looking at how do we how do we do that? How do we make it a destination event type of place where people can do everything, hang out, eat, shop, live, uh, and and bring gaming into that mix. So we're looking at how we can do that. So that's really it for VSGI. Um, I'm going to go over really quick the Mason Game and Technology Academy. Um, I know uh, Vera and Scott were uh, traveling, so I'm just going to go ahead and give the update because it's just easier. Uh, so Vera's done an outstanding job of uh, rebounding from our pandemic. We, you know, we did a great job going virtual last summer by necessity, but this year it's all about uh, bringing it back to normal as best we can, given the rules and the regulations and the relaxation of said rules and relaxation you know, of regulations. So what's really cool is this summer is going to be a hodgepodge of things. It's going to have the virtual stuff because people still need that. It's going to have residential and uh, commuter in-person face-to-face classes. And it's even going to have some online asynchronous classes that kids can do. So whatever the situation, we're finding ways to get this knowledge and this programming to uh, the kids of all different kinds of communities and we've worked with the different schools and what's really nice is you know we've got stuff going from June 28th to August 20th you know every week there's something going on there's various different programs some of it virtual some of it in person lots of teacher opportunities lots of uh, student opportunities as uh, teaching assistants uh, and what's really cool is this summer we uh, were able to partner with the University of Westminster uh, to actually uh, host some classes for their students as well. Uh, they have a program over there and they really wanted kind of this, uh, this, this primer class that you know, we're offering for students there uh, for, their, for their students and you know, a way to kind of get them started and get them interested within the game design uh, degree. And so we're doing a lot of uh, classes uh, over three weeks uh, here, you know, at a slightly different time frame to accommodate them, uh, but they should uh, they should really enjoy that. So if you have any questions about what is being offered, or you know people who still might want to sign up, we still got room. Uh, Mgta.gmu.eu has all that information. So, but they've done a great job on that. So the last thing, we're going to open it up for anybody who has additional questions or things that they want to talk about. But one of the things that I want to bring up that we've been working on and kind of uh, doing a little bit for last year anyways, is how do we formalize this idea of a residency versus a virtual uh, affiliation? And you know, even the terminology is something I'd love people's feedback on, right? It's like, you know, it's really easy to understand what a residency means is because you know, it's, it, it, it invokes certain things. It's like, well, you know, if you're a resident, you get, you get an office and there's equipment and there's obviously all these amenities of an office and then you know, we have great folks uh, here that, uh, you know, come in and offer things. I know uh, Gatto is just talk to folks. And, you know, everybody here is uh, Bob. Everybody's contributed in some fashion to, to making these, you know, relationships work. But when we went virtual, we had to shift that around and, and we had to do the, you know, the outreach, you know, virtually. And we had to work with them uh, virtually and getting them uh, people to work with them virtually. And, and how do we how do we quantify what that relationship is? Because now what we're seeing is we're seeing people that come in like intergalactic education, they actually have, have their own office already. But what they want is they want you know, to work with us because we have a lot of expertise and we have a lot of folks that are great at what they do and we can help them become better. And what, what we look for really is the opportunity it brings to us to offer to our students and our alumni and our faculty and, and, and partners such as the folks here today. And so when we've been talking about what virtual means is, you know, obviously they're not gonna have, you know, offices. If they're local, they're welcome to come in and use uh, some of the amenities or office space, maybe even check out equipment, we can look at that. But at the end of the day, what are other things that we could potentially offer? And we've been discussing internally on this, you know, we used to have a mailbox service and then we got rid of that because, you know, we didn't want the people just treating it as an address, right? Um, you know, and, and how do we up the game with networking opportunities? And we have great folks at Prince William uh, Chamber and, and the development that have, have been really good at this. Um, and, you know, do we increase competitions, make more, you know, Shark Tank type things? Do, do we up the types of training we do? Uh, you know, do we increase the ability for financing to be an option where they can uh, connect with investors? 
And so what we're really looking for, and it doesn't have to be today, but if you have thoughts on it, I will take it. But what we're really looking for is any thoughts that you guys might have, um, what, what could we do to really increase how we offer value to a virtual company? You know, there's, when we're not giving them some of the stuff we would normally do with a residency. And that's what we've been uh, looking at. And, what, and then what do we want to call it? Is it just a virtual residency? Is it just a, a virtual affiliation? Like, how do we do that? You know, it's always been a resident or an alumni. And now you've got these folks that are not a resident and they're not really, you know, alumni, but they're working with us and they're affiliated with us. So I'm just going to throw that out as an open thing. And then also, if you guys have stuff that you want to talk about or anything you guys want to uh, throw out those opportunities, I mean, I'm uh, welcome to uh, give you this moment. We've still got a few minutes left. So um, I'm just going to open up. And if there are questions or, or thoughts, feel free, raise your hand, just talk, whatever, whatever the case may be. Oh, Bob, I see a hand. Nice. What's up? Yeah. So the, one of the great advantages of, of a physical co-location of people are the uh, chance encounters, the water cooler. Oh, yeah. Um, and so we don't have that with virtual, but you could set up um, kind of a virtual water cooler, um, something like, I don't know, once a month for a couple hours, mm -hmm. you know, of it, you know, for me, it would be of an evening, but, you know, for other folks, maybe it's you know, <laughs> during, during the day or whatever, that, you know, it's like, you know, just come and be online yep. for a couple hours and take all comers, what it, you know, students, other folks, whoever wants to, to come and chat about whatever they want to talk about. No, I think that's great. That's a good idea. And I, we, and, and Stephanie mentioned this too. It's like Discord could be really good for that if we invite all the current and future companies to that. Um, you, your idea of, you know, having official times is always good too, because, you, know, you know, there's something that's still lost even with the asynchronous kind of form of, of communication that you have on Discord sometimes. Sometimes you're lucky and you, you get into chats. And I've even seen a few um, software packages out there that almost like give you a virtual office space. Uh, where everybody's kind of online and it actually looks like you're in an office, uh, you know, not going VR route, that's a little too much <laughs> and probably too much commitment for folks. And, and to your point, Bob, you don't, you, they don't need to necessarily be on there all the time, but if you give them that feel that they've got that office connection, I think that would be really good. So I, I like that idea. That's very good. Uh, any other, any other thoughts? Or other things that we could offer to really bring the value in a virtual relationship? And again, if, if you can't think of it right now, but you think of something after, we're, we're always open to this. And uh, that's been our biggest thing right now. And, and most of the people that I've talked to recently that uh, could be potential uh, companies have really been leaning towards uh, the virtual side of things. So it would definitely something to keep in mind. Cool. I don't see any other hands or anybody's talking. Uh, so uh, any of our folks that you know on here um, have anything that they kind of want to uh, hype up you know do you have any upcoming events or or you know uh, uh, special things that you guys want to let people know about uh, you know pet projects whatever that may be <laughs> yeah awesome well, I appreciate everybody taking the time out of uh, the day. And, and like I said, this is this, this open discussion here for residency is, is something we've been working on for a while, but we really want your input and we're going to reach out to the rest of the board as well because uh, we want to make sure we do that right. Just like uh, the VSGI itself has been a tremendous uh, help to the various companies that have gone through here. We want to continue to make that uh, still an addition to any of our virtual uh, companies or affiliated companies that we have going forward. So, and if you know folks that are still looking, always feel free to send them our way. And like I said, worst case, we, we point them in the right direction, even if it's not us, but uh, we, we like it when it is us. Cool, I don't have anything else. We do appreciate you guys coming out, taking the time during the summer, this heat. I, I assume it's still hot out there. Heather, I see your mic is on. Did you have something you wanted to add?
Nope, nope. Okay, just, just making say sure. say goodbye. <laughs> okay, well, thank you for showing up. Thank you, and thanks, Bob, and thanks, uh, uh, thanks to uh, Mr. Gatto, uh, and thanks to everybody else who showed up here that uh, support the BSGI in their in their various different uh, positions here, and we really appreciate it. Uh, and like I said, we want we want uh, any kind of information, thoughts, ideas, opportunities from any of you guys or anything we can assist you with, that's what we're here for. So thanks again, and I'll give you 15 minutes back to your day. Great, thank you. Enjoy your evening, take care.